Okay, so to clean your uh, carburetor off your Predator 212cc engine or Honda GX200 and clones, you're going to need, of course, a carburetor cleaner, a cup for gas that comes out, um, you know, and some safety glasses, a 10 millimeter wrench or a socket, and some paper towels. And um, I also have a gas mask. I don't know if this is uh, the right one for vapors by this guy but I want to wear it because if you inhale a lot of this stuff it really will mess with you it does have long term of neurological effects which is it's not good so first off this is the adapter for the air filter this guy cleans really easily when you spray it with carb cleaner it just shoots right off anyways so first I'm going to Take the bowl off. This is where the gas stores when it like short term storage when it first comes in through here. It builds up here. When the float closes, it stops it from going in. Okay. Just so it has a constant flow. Okay, so you can see it's starting to come out. Get a cup. Let it drain. Make sure you dispose of this properly. Alright, so now that you got your uh, carburetor, the exterior all cleaned out, go ahead and take those out if they stayed in. Mine kind of failed. And just wipe off any extra dirt that might be there. So go ahead and take your 10 millimeter wrench, socket, whatever you're using. Loosen this. I already drained it and that's why it's loose. Then you'll be fine to remove the bowl once the bolt's off. Just by pulling it down. Um, be careful of this. This is the bowl. It pivots right here on these uh, this pin. And if you take the pin out, this is what happens. The bowl will fall off. Not to worry. This jet, this little, uh, oh, I don't know what this is called. It's like a stopper. It plugs this port right here when it fills up. Um, it's probably like a needle or something but it has a little spring right here and that's what you don't want to lose because there's very small and it's very hard to find so when you take the jet out go ahead and put it in a safe place along with this uh, this pin right here okay so looking for the oh, okay so I didn't drain it all the way did I came out of here Okay, so anyways, the main jet you're going to want to pay attention to is right down in here. You can probably tell you can get a flathead screwdriver in there to take it out. And you are right. So it can be kind of tough to find a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver that fits in there just right. But uh, once you do, oh, by the way, don't play with this O-ring right here. Because uh, sometimes it's just like that, kind of comes off its tracks. Uh, if it comes off that and you can't squeeze it back into place, just throw it in the freezer for a little bit and it'll contract. And then you can put it right back in. But don't snap it if it becomes fragile. So anyways, take your flathead, put it in there, turn counterclockwise. Be very careful not to scratch things up. This is aluminum and in there the carburetor jet is brass. They both dent barely easily, especially when you're using a steel screwdriver. So go ahead and screw this as much as you can. Once it gets all wobbly and loose, just go ahead and take your carburetor. Boom, it comes out. This is your main jet, and up there I think it's a pilot jet. Okay, and to take that out, you're going to want to turn your choke on or I mean off 
and um, you can see I already did it, but uh, it's going to be sticking up right there. Uh, preferably get something plastic, reach in there, push down on it. Might be a little tough, but once you get it down, just go ahead and whack it on a table like that, and you will see. Boom. It comes out. Remember the orientation? It goes just like this. It goes back in. Likewise, the jet goes back in like this. Alright, so now to clean these, it's kind of self explanatory. You just want to get some carburetor uh, cleaner. Use precautions and just spray the crap out of it. Make sure there's absolutely no dirt in these little holes. These tiny ones here, you get a good spray going all the way through there. Just make sure it's just clean. And then we'll get on to the next part. Okay, so once you went ahead and cleaned out both jets, you're going to want to go ahead and spray in here. Get that all cleaned out. And then we're going to go ahead and put the bowl back on along with the float and everything. And then we're going to go ahead and clean all these little ports right here. They all go throughout the carburetor and there's many openings and exits that we will need to clean. Okay, now we're going to put this portion of the carburetor back together in the reverse order in which we took it apart. So that means you take this guy right here, put it in with the, uh, oops, let me get the camera to focus. All right, so put it in with the holy end, well, the ones with all the holes and all that stuff in on the bottom. Whoops. So put that in, let it sink down. Let's see, I'm trying to see if it came through yet. Now, you see that hole right there? That's where it should be coming through. So I'm going to very gently take my screwdriver and press it down very, very gently because it is brass and you don't want to chip anything because if you get metal, like a metal shaving, very small, it's going to, it's easily going to clog up that hole. So please get something plastic and save yourself the troubles. Go ahead and get your main jet. I skipped that, my bad. <laughs> so go ahead and get your main jet. I'm just going to do this so you guys know orientation. That's what I'm doing over. Um, put it so the screwdriver end right here is facing out. Put the threaded end in like that. Let it go down. Tap it a little. Let it fall on its own. Take your screwdriver. Wiggle it down a little if it goes anymore. Now carefully screw it in. This should go in effortlessly until it reaches the bottom. Still going. Okay. And then it'll get hard and just give it a give it a tighten a little bit. Make sure it's definitely not loose, but you know, get it on there snug. Not too much, really you'll you'll strip it. Okay, so now to put the bowl, the float on. You're gonna wanna grab your the actual float right here. And then you wanna get your pin. And make sure none of this stuff is dirty and has stuff built up on it. This looks pretty clean. So you're going to want to slip it over like this. So this needle right here, which is what it's called, goes in and plugs that hole pretty much. The one right there. It sits right in that hole. Just like this. Let me do it again. Different angles. Boom. Just put it in there. Nothing too difficult. That's really the only way that makes sense. Now get your pin. There's nothing locking this on. This pin just slides in. Just wiggle it in a little bit. There you go. Just get it even on both ends. It really doesn't matter. Do not lubricate any of this stuff. It'll mix with your gasoline. and It's not going to hurt it, but 
it's it's not supposed to be lubricated or any of that. The gas does it just fine. Now take your carburetor bowl. Whoops. First you're gonna want to take your O-ring. Put that in there. Decide to fit relatively fine, but if it is overstretched and it doesn't want to sit in, you're like push it in here and it pops out over here. Uh, throw it in the freezer for a little bit and it will contract, which will make it much easier. So once you have that O-ring on, slip your carburetor bowl any orientation, it doesn't matter. Whatever's easier to you will probably be facing out like this. This right here is just to drain it when it's still on the bike engine. Alright, so put that on like that. Make sure it's nice and on there. Now take the bolt, Let's screw it in. Take your ratchet, our wrench, go ahead and tighten it, remember this is aluminum so don't tighten it too much. Nice and snug and soft. Okay, and now we're going to clean the smaller parts out. Okay, so the main ports we're going to want to be aware of, I'm going to go ahead and point them out. This guy right here this guy right there you'll notice this fuel uh, input right there if you have a reason to believe that may be dirty um, you're gonna want to spray that out with your carburetor bolt off because that's eventually where it leads to I did not do that um, you're gonna want to get this guy right here and then you'll notice right here this is like your idler jet I think that's what it's called but it just is your idle um, you can clean that as well. Alright, so after you went ahead and cleaned all those little ports and valves and all that stuff, your uh, carburetor is now clean and, and ready to go. If, uh, if this was the problem, then it's most likely fixed now. If not, there's a possibility that there's something just really stuck in there. I mean, you can look in all these ports and if you see something, by all means, take it out, but... That usually should do the job. I also went ahead and cleaned this uh, adapter to the air filter. Um, if you have a stock air filter, you don't have this, but if you have like this aftermarket style one, this goes on there. Carburetor cleaner just blasts through all the dirt and grime on this real easy. That's why I use it. Anyways, it's nice to just clean your carburetor even if you don't really need to. Keeps it running good and kind of slows down the the build up on it which is which is good anyways thanks for watching